When I think about how much more God wants to do in all of our lives, I can't help but to ask myself, am I standing in the way of my own blessings? Of course, we all understand that God doesn't force his will upon any one of us. And as a consequence, we sometimes live with the decisions that we make, and that hasn't always been good. Doing things in our own strength has been costly. That explains why you and I have put up walls in our lives, barriers that defend entry. But sometimes we put up walls so high, it can distract our response to God. There's so much more to your life. So let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And remember, don't let your walls define you. I've always wondered throughout my entire Christian experience why it has seemed that many of our trials are similar in the sense that we often repeat the same test. That understanding has always aroused my curiosity. I couldn't understand how you could go through a thing and no sooner than you came out of it, you found yourself trapped in the very same thing and most often the very thing that you committed you would never go through again once God got you out. I used to hear coming up, if it isn't one thing, it's another. And I've even said it myself. And while that makes perfect sense, I don't think any of us has ever been prepared to see the same trial taking place over and over again. And that's not to suggest that the scene wouldn't be altered from time to time. Because in a lot of situations, it's the same game but a different person. The same trap, but a different group of people. Same pain, it just came from a different source. But in reality, it's the same set of circumstances happening repetitiously. And none of us are prepared for reruns. None of us are prepared for the same thing recurring. And because we are not prepared for the rhythm of siblings, we have taught ourselves certain survival tactics, certain strategies, a certain mental ability that establishes personal safeguards to ensure security. That's pretty much how we have ended up at that will never happen to me again. The only thing that will ever bring us to this disclosure, to this concession, is having to deal with the same stuff and over time, what happens is that you build up this intolerance. You build up this mindset. You build up this preference. And that becomes your armor. That becomes your resistance. Your fortress to that thing never existing ever again in your life. And for the rest of your life, you are prepared to guard your decisions because nothing is supposed to hurt you like that ever again. This is what we've told ourselves without end. You told yourself, I'm not dealing with this anymore. And then it happened again. And then it happened another time. And then it happened the third time. Have you ever wondered why it has seemed that all of your tests are the same? And as a consequence, it leaves you in a certain place. I call it the unwilling place. It's that place in your life that says no more. It's that place in your life that says I don't need friends. It's that place in your life that says, I don't care, and what's the point? And I'll never love again, and I'll never be used again, and I'll never trust again. And when you get to this point, nothing gets by you. 
And that can be a problem. The reality is that something has happened. And as a result, something is wrong with all of us in a mystifying way. I understand the benefit of having to grow up and things making us strong and developing in wisdom. But you don't go through constant attack and not have side effects. As a consequence of our pain, we all have obsessions. We all have phobias. We all have aversions. Let me say it another way. All of us have been hurt. All of us have been through weathery conditions. And vacillating between conflicts has built up resistance. Going back and forth has cost you and I. That's why today admits that we are vulnerable to boundaries. We're vulnerable to stipulations. And when there are boundaries, and these boundaries are met with the understanding that God doesn't force his will upon our lives, the question that I want to force upon you this morning is this. How do we excel to the next level of what God wants to do in our lives if there are confines, if there are barriers? If you'll indulge me, I would like to answer that question with a statement. God can't fulfill our expectations and neither our confidence if we don't address our enclosures, which means that walls in our lives must be torn down. In other words, there's a part of you that has to surrender. There's a part of you that has to let go of the past. There's a part of your mind that has to be untied. Your emotions has to be reset. I don't care how much you say you believe God for this or that you believe God for that. Your expectations will not be fulfilled until you address where you went wrong. That's why you have been so restless. That devil has come to torment you. And God is saying you will not find fulfillment until you finally deal with your enclosures, your weaknesses, and your weaknesses are as follows. You don't trust anybody. You don't believe in anybody. You don't want friends. You don't feel like talking. You have been so hurt. You don't know where to take your next step. And could it be as careful as you and I need to be? that we are missing opportunities because we fear letting go. Could it be that we're taking our frustrations out on the people who need to be in our lives? Is it possible to be mistaken because at this point you can't be received by anybody because your walls define you? You're not approachable. You are not friendly. You are not humble. You are cantankerous. You appear moody. And by the way, those are pretty guardrails. But when you put those guardrails up, you had no intention of letting anybody in, including God. And if God gets in, he has to welcome your rules. And the problem with that is this. Your rules are not holy. Your rules are not sanctified. Your rules don't have the Holy Ghost. Your rules do not reflect the will of God. And when you live under these conditions, two things happen. Number one, you live through unnecessary seasons. And number two, nobody wants to fool with you. In fact, if the truth be told, you don't even want to deal with yourself. And so in order for God to set the rest of your life up, in order for God to fulfill your destiny or your expectations, he has to help you to organize 
your boundaries. Because at this point, you and I are skeptical. And we're skeptical about everything. And we don't have any spiritual discernment to recognize anything different. Paul ends up having a similar situation, but the difference with him was the fact that his experience kept him from conceit. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 records that Paul has a thorn in his flesh. A messenger of Satan came to buffet him. And this thorn came because of the abundance of revelation that Paul had received. Like many of you, there has been an abundance of revelations. Your experiences have been different and it has left us with thorns, an issue of the flesh. But in Paul's case, the Bible said it kept him from becoming conceited. It made him humble. It made him meek. It made him respectful and submissive. Now, I brought this out to prove how your experiences can cause things to take place in your life. And that includes strongholds. Your experiences can cause you to be arrogant and narcissistic and bitter and high sounding and imperious. What should have humbled you has left you in a bad place. Somebody you are listening to me right now and your situation didn't leave you with an advantage, but it left you angry. And now all around you are walls. Places guarded with an attitude, a place guarded with biasness, a place guarded with mood swings and standards and opinions. In other words, you have become a watchman over your emotions. And I respect the gesture. But the question is, if God desires to bless you, or if God desires to give you a season, how does he get the blessing to you? How does he get the blessing to you without having to climb your walls or meet your standards? Now, keep in mind that God doesn't force his will on any one of us. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15 reads, Choose ye this day who you will serve. And if God doesn't choose for us, that means that you and I may have the chance going through again what caused your walls to go up in the first place. And as much as you and I hate repetition, sometimes repetition helps us to address what's wrong with us. I almost wanted to tell you that it should have already happened. You should have already been past this phase of your life. You should already be walking in victory. You should already be healed. But your walls, your attitude, your conceit, your thorn, your emotional state can discourage your reality. Here's what God needs for you to understand. If you are going to be better mentally, if you're going to be better physically, if you're going to be better spiritually, if you are going to advance or walk into the next season of wholeness for your life, your walls must come down. My friend, you've been tied down long enough. You've dwelt among the tombs long enough. You've been bound with fetters. You've been cutting away at your opportunities with stones. This has been a gathering nightmare. But God is setting you free this morning. I rebuke every devil and every unclean spirit that desires to bind you in the name of Jesus. Every wall, every boundary, every stipulation. I declare and decree that you are whole. I pray this word blesses you. And I pray heaven's best for you and your family. Thank you for this opportunity. 
Until the next time.